Good evening and welcome back to Abbottstown here at the Irish Sports Campus for the second game of the day here in the Euro Hockey Championship Qualifiers of 2022. The home nation Ireland taking on Poland here in this second game of the day. Myself, Andrew Blair White and Isabel Joyce are going to bring you through this game. Isabel, it's lovely to have you here this evening. Thanks very much. I'm really looking forward to this match. First time Ireland playing on home ground since 2019. So a really exciting moment for them and for the supporters. Going to see the anthems first, starting off with the anthem of Ireland. Those were the two national anthems, the Irish one followed by the Polish anthem. Here, what are we to expect this evening, Isabel? Well, I think Ireland come in as favourites, there's no doubt about that. Ranked 13th coming into this tournament, so definitely the, high, the highest ranked out of the teams. Poland currently 27th, so very much the underdogs. And, and I suppose for Ireland, uh, you know, it's not something they're that used to of late being the favourites. Um, but it's something I hope they'll relish a lot more time on the ball than we, than we would have seen in previous months, like again in the World Cup and in the Olympics. And these are tournaments we're used to seeing them in now, which is a big change. But I, I think we'll see lots of time on the ball and uh, hopefully plenty of goals. Well, that's the hope, obviously, as you can see on your screens here. A good crowd forming here in Abbott. Sounds great with the, the stands up in place. and. Plenty of people piling in on this Thursday evening. Obviously, more games to be played throughout Saturday and Sunday as well. And hopefully those weekend games can garner big, big crowds. You can obviously get your tickets online on the Hockey Ireland website or on any of the Hockey Ireland socials as well. There'll be links there. But looking at this afternoon's game between the Czech Republic and Turkey, ended one all. Probably, given rankings perspectives, it was a big, big performance from Turkey. Yeah, well, coming in, uh, you know, the, as you said, the rankings, Turkey well below, but judging apparently by their training sessions during the week, um, Poland probably better, or sorry, Turkey much better than, than their ranking suggests. Um, so no surprises really for, I think, the players around the circuit that they've come out and done well and, and pulled off a draw there. They're probably a good result for, for Ireland that the other two teams in the group have drawn first up, so if they can get a win on the board, they go straight up the top of the table. That's the Polish lineup for this evening's game. Obviously, their captain Marlina Rabaka really 
the, the star show, obviously captain of the side for a number of years now and, and probably their best player as well. Yeah, big threat at short corners, played around the world, huge experience from her, so they'll be looking for her to really show them the way. That Irish team as well, it's just faded off your screen there. The likes of Katie Mullen, Rogine Upton, Maina Tice have all become stalwarts of the side alongside Deirdre Duke. They all start this afternoon. Poland are going to get us underway, playing from left to right as you see on the screens. Four quarters of 15 minutes ahead of us. And we are underway. I suppose in these early stages, Isabel, both teams looking to probably feel each other out and, and, and see what might work. Yeah, well, there's always the, the worry about an overhead. So Ireland just looking to pick off any loose passes. They've done that well here, but uh, Hannah McLaughlin not able to catch up with that one. A bit of a let, let off for Poland. And we saw certainly in the early stages of this afternoon's game, Turkey adopting a, a full press from the outset. It's a very uh, aggressive first quarter they played. Ireland at this early stage looking to try and pick apart Poland in those pockets in midfield and got themselves on the ball for the first real time today. This ball's recycled out towards Lena Tice who finds Carey there on the right hand side. Ball goes forward to Mullen and that crash ball into the D is intercepted very nicely by Rebecca. Poland managed to find a free and get themselves out of a bit of early danger. Bit of let a bit of a let off from Katie Mullen there. Probably could have gone around the outside. Plenty of space for her to run into rather than just looking to crash the ball in. Poland having to look into the sun here. So not an easy thing for any goalkeeper. And it would probably look to go aerial with their shots, Ireland. A yeah, good piece of play here from Catterlap down the left-hand side. So... At her side, a little bit of territory and also a free. Really valuable skills there at left back by Katerla. Lovely cut inside and then just created the obstruction. As you mentioned for Ireland, the clear favourites really coming into these qualifiers this year. Do you feel that's a, something that they'll well, hopefully we'll try to relish and, and try to take that apart. But I suppose when you're used to maybe going into some of these bigger tournaments as underdogs, what's that change in mindset going to be like? It's just about not panicking if you don't go up early. Not too many crash balls, but it's Poland on the attack now. Yeah, good intervention from Hannah McLaughlin there and a needed one as well. As Poland found a little bit of space down this right-hand side, which is right close to us here in the commentary gantry. Deirdre Duke wins her side at foul and it's good overhead there from McLaughlin. Good chase from Michelle Carey, cross but too high. The danger called straight away. If she controlled that one, it would have been a really, really difficult bit of defending for Poland. Just got away from her here. Good pace to get there, but it kept on running away from her and probably a better option would have been controlling it. The overhead well controlled by Beggs in the midfield. The referee not happy there that the Polish player did not get five yards. A little bit harsh considering the free probably wasn't started. I uh, wasn't stopped by Roisin Upton. Yeah, Upton and Tice here in the centre back rows just looking to try find an opening. Find McCauley down the right hand side again. They opt for that crash ball into the D, which is easily picked. But they'll get a long corner out of it. Yeah, I just don't think they need to go route one so early at the moment. Probably could recycle that or look to take on a player, break a line. Another crash ball from Lena Tice doesn't come off. Good pressure being applied here, though, on the Polish defence. Work to do. 
in the corner, desperately looking for a foul here. Does pretty well to get out of there, and they do manage to get that foul in the end. It was Basser Jack to start off with. And Blasic, who got the free. Really good pressure being applied by Ireland here. Full high press. Katie Mullen now looking to win the ball up in the right-hand corner. And just a little bit of ill-discipline gives away the free. Yeah, I think Monica Polovchak was really looking for Mullen to just niggle away there and to be able to get her free pretty free of charge as it was. Go for the overhead and it's miscontrolled. Potentially an opportunity for Poland here. Good quick free, forced in, but just finds the foot. I think they're gonna bring it back. Ireland thought they might have it again, but. A good quick tempo play here from the Polish. Just putting a little bit of pressure on Ireland. Trying to find that ball across to, it was Papi Natch, but she was unable to control it. It was a good ball. Excellent ball. She was just going the wrong direction, wasn't she? Couldn't adjust Fabinyak. And that was a guilt edge chance, really. The referee just making sure that the free is taken from the correct position by Elena Tice. Playing a three quarters press here, Poland, so it doesn't really make a difference where the free is taken from, but uh, they need to make sure that they stamp their authority on the game already. Again, the overhead is where Tice goes, but not within five yards there, and a good pick there from Perju. Referee again, just having a word. You need to stop the ball before taking the free. Just Michelle Carey getting excited. Just took it a little bit too quickly. Tyson Upton here again. Just trying to work the angle, trying to work an opening. With this three-quarter press from the Polish. It's trying to make Ireland, I suppose, go more direct. And again, a little bit of an opportunity there. Just that ball not going quite where Paula Slavinska would have wanted. Just a little bit, a metre behind where she would have been hoping. It's off the face from Curran there, but unable to find Kerry. But a little bit of a mistrap allows Ireland to reset again here. And you think this is something we might see quite a bit of during this game? I think so. I think what Ireland are struggling with is they're not able to link into midfield. It's a good press from Poland. They're putting high pressure onto those midfield players, and that's why Ireland are looking long, because they don't really see those players in front of them. Kern advancing on the right-hand side. That's a good ball in. And they'll be looking for something, and they find... The first penalty corner of this evening's game and it was well worked in the end. Started with Ellen Curran down the right hand side. They got the ball inside and they win the foot. Big feature of Ireland's play. Right back attacking up the wing. She beat a player and uh, managed to find Michelle Carey. They couldn't quite control it and there were lots of clashes of sticks but then finally a foot was spotted by the umpire and uh, we'll see what Ireland have at the top. A couple of options. McLaughlin will see her probably sweep at some stage and it's Roshi Nupton who'll be dragging and we're going to see the unusual injection technique of a sweep from Elena Tice. It goes to Upton and it's a bit of a melee in there but it's called as a free out and they're looking for the call Poland and as that was the case, Kerry took a reverse shot at goal. It's a good save from Kusharska. 
A little bit sloppy from Poland trying to play out so quickly. Well, they just assumed it was going to be a free, but once they once they played the ball, you only have to be five and then you can play. And Michelle Carey made sure she was five and earned another long corner. And the tempo has just increased that bit. Yeah, good piece of work this time from Blasic on the cover. Brilliant turn, just can't quite control it. Really good defending from Poland. They look pretty solid, Poland, in defence at this early stage in and around the 10 minute mark, and just caused Ireland to probably rethink a few plans and having to try and work those, those different angles. Trying to this is the, the worry, I suppose, for Ireland is when you've got a game where you're controlling the ball so much but not scoring, you could potentially be caught on the break. And Poland looking to do just that. Tatarchuk wins her side a line ball there within the 25. A good piece of skill there to advance her into the D, but just couldn't quite get on the end of it when it mattered most. And Roisin Upton able to bring this ball away and Gets penalised. It's given as a foot, I think. She's unlucky there. It probably came off the stick, but given as a free, and she did well to just put up with the decision, make sure she got back and defended. But Poland proving really difficult on the ball, showing that they have lots of pace, so maybe a little bit tougher opposition than Ireland were expecting. Yeah, Strube there trying to play that one first time down the line on the right-hand side. Missing out, and McLaughlin goes for the overhead, and it's the aforementioned Strube there. That's in the way to intervene. A piece of skill from Hawkshaw. Again, a similar passage of play beginning to form itself here for Ireland. Upton again goes for the overhead, and McLaughlin wins it. On the second occasion, and a good shot at goal, but another decent save from Kucharska. And just at the moment, Poland standing firm. It's a good option going aerial from Ireland because Poland do not look that comfortable under the high ball. No surprise, they're looking into the sun. So not an easy task taking it down. Ireland just waiting for the mistake, really. And Lachlan forcing a good save. And Curran really good on the ball. Out to Mullen. Looks to find Carey again. A yeah, chance for Poland to bring this ball away, but and does so successfully. Does Mazur. Poland here, well below Ireland in those world hockey rankings. I oh, know rankings can't tell you everything. One all draw between Czech Republic and Turkey earlier on today, and Turkey are 10 spots below, so just goes to show in these pressure situations, in these pressure qualification games, that, that any results are possible. Absolutely, and you know, at the moment, the professionalization of women's sports teams can change so much within 12, 18 months. I think what will tell for Ireland is perhaps the strength of their bench. Usually, if you're the higher ranked team, you've, you've the better overall squad. And as the top players for Poland get tired, then that might be when Ireland can, can pounce and make their experience pay really good defending by Hawkshaw. Yeah, they work mm -hmm. it really nicely there out. Mullen trying to find Carroll there, but just a little bit more, too much juice on the pass. Look 
looks like Poland are going to go the overhead themselves. Ellen Curran takes it quickly. A hallmark of her game. and It's a long corner in the process. I think they're probably going to be at their most potent, Ireland, when they are injecting that little bit of pace into the game, especially from quickly taken frees, quickly taken line balls. Well, Poland sitting deep, so difficult to get to make your pace show. Really lovely ball out to Sarah McCauley. Gets in the baseline, ball back and wide. Just a little bit too close there to the near post. And uh, Katie Mullen can't get the angle. Yeah, it's a big opportunity that. It was very good work from McCauley on the right-hand side, driving into the D. There she is again, this time in the midfield. Finds Beggs. Coming to the close of the first quarter here. Looks like Poland are going to stand firm. Unless there's one last attack here for Ireland Mullen. Trying to work something. Bit of sloppy defending from Deirdre Duke there. Just thought she'd see if she could sneak a little turnover before the end of the first quarter nil all as the players take a two minute break and uh, you just feel like Ireland maybe they should drop out Andrew try and win the ball when when Poland are pressing higher and give themselves some room to run into yeah indeed it just hasn't quite clicked yet for Ireland in that first quarter there were bright sparks in there some good Little bits of individual play, but probably not piecing together that those team chances they'd maybe want. Poland marking very tightly of, at, at the back. It's bound, they're bound to get more tired playing that style. And so Ireland will be hoping that they'll get ragged and start leaving a little bit of space. But Michelle Carey in particular being marked very tightly. She's the one that seems to be making the most incisive runs. But at every turn, she's got someone right on her back. I'm looking forward to seeing Naomi Carroll on the ball. She hasn't really had an opportunity. Really good 3D skills. So if she can break through one line, that's where you feel Ireland can maybe make it count because they're marking so tightly. If one of the midfielders or one of the drop forwards can break through a line and take a shot from the top like we saw with Hannah McLaughlin there from that uh, miscontrolled overhead from Poland. A yeah, great shot there of Irish head coach. Sean Dancer at the moment. What do you think he's relaying to his team at this stage? He might be changing something about the press. Maybe maybe he is getting them to drop out like I spoke about. They do have some really good pace. Especially Sarah Tarns, for example, hasn't, hasn't had a chance to really make that show. Or perhaps they go tighter and go higher up and try and just get a, a forward high when they win high up in the press. Be interesting to see. Yeah, well, we saw again in the first game this afternoon, which can sometimes be a feature that the first two or three quarters were so well contested that we got to the final quarter and actually turned into a very open, loose game from both sides, beginning to tire ever so slightly and actually could have gone any way. In the end, Czech Republic did equalise in that final quarter, but Turkey very easily could have gone up the other end and, and scored another winner. It was to and fro. Poland starting this second quarter off well with Tatarchuk, who's already shown herself off to have plenty of good skill on the ball. Quick as well, has caused Ireland a few issues. Going for the crash ball. And pretty easily picked off by Hawkshaw, but runs straight into a Polish attacker. Really good control there from Ireland because that came off the shin of a Polish player and no panic. They didn't, no hands being thrown in the air, asking the referee for something she couldn't see. That's Roisin Upton, huge experience on the ball now. 94 caps, but uh, feels like she's been in this team forever. Yeah, 
Yeah, good ball to Tice trying to advance this play, trying to find that opening. Using Perger as the link in midfield. They again go crash and is lifted in to Rebecca by Duke. Arlena Rebecca, the captain of this Polish side and anchoring things from centre back. It's a good ball from McCauley though. Finds Mullen. Trying to advance into the D to find Duke and that deflection just goes wide and probably Ireland's best side at goal so far today. Yeah, beautiful cross. Spotted Dears Duke who was just going backwards, couldn't control her feet to get a better angle on that one and touches it wide but really good opportunity from Ireland and a beautiful cross from their skipper initially well controlled by McLaughlin there but just couldn't get full control of that ball yeah, Poland here trying to maybe take a little bit of the energy out of the game from an Irish point of view. Trying to get a bit of time on the ball. That was a forced ball though, and straight to Mullen. And a real chance here for Ireland now. They can work this right, Purdue trying to find the way through, but again, it's Rebecca there with a Super tackle and alleviates all concern. Well, she's such an experienced player. She's nearly the one you'd want to be staying away from as an Irish player. Katie Mullen probably could have done with holding on to the ball there. Purdue more of a defensive midfielder, but she's on the ball again now. A chance for Ireland and in. Dear Duke. she missed out a couple of minutes ago, but she doesn't miss out again. This time finds the corner and finds Ireland's first goal of the tournament. And yeah, great scenes there, great support for this Irish team as well. And they're very glad to see that. It was a well worked goal in the end again. It came from a quickly taken free by Purdue. Ball into Mullen and that first time deflection from Duke. A very tidy finish to get herself and her side off the mark. Were they a hint fortuitous that that ball from Purdue had not gone five? Absolutely. I think that would be called back another day. But I think it's been a feature of today. No one's been questioning the umpires. No one's been putting the hands up. There's been no complaining. Good skill this time around from Blasic for Poland as they're trying to get that ball in and they're going to win. A short corner themselves, that ball was a relatively abject ball into the D, but Roisin Upton unable to control it, rolls off the foot and an immediate chance for Poland to respond to. Yeah, it's kind of a bouncing bomb, that one. You just lift it shin height into the circle and hope for the best. Deflected it off, off the stick into her foot, Roisin Upton, but it was, it was a worthwhile tactic if you find yourself in the corner. So all eyes on Marlena Rebacca. They had two castles at the top for Poland. Top two, you'd think that they'll go to Rebecca. It's Polish Schach at the other castle, which they do go to. And they may get this call back, but they play on and reverse harmlessly over the bar in the end from Drozda. They went for the element of surprise. Monica Polefchak opted to sweep, but Sarah Tarns did well. She was sprinting out. You could see her trying to run down the the, the, the flick. Um, she went flat and made sure she got some stick on it. Good little period of play here for Poland, having conceded that first goal of the game. And there, Blasic again, causing a few problems down this right-hand flank. Have to be a bit surprised they didn't go to Rebecca there for that first short corner. That's just definite tactics. 
Not a bad ploy to first up go to the, the the usually unused side. I think that if they get another corner, if and when they get another corner, we'll we'll then get a chance to see Rebecca. Yeah, un unable to control that Anastasia shot. Tice tries to go in behind. It's a good looking ball that as well. What good work from Carey to try and get that ball into that 45 degree angle. Almost got in each other's way there, Tarns and Carey. Incredible awareness from Neve Carey. She knew her sister was making the overlapping run. A lovely little touch in behind her. Big pressure now from Ireland. Testing the tight skills of Balser Jacques. That's really unlucky from Sarah Tarns. Beautifully won. And then she was fouled, but given the other way, I feel like this is uh, justice, <laughs> really. Yeah, definitely. Chance for Ireland here on the left hand side. Upton will try to bring this ball forward. That's something that Roisin Upton does really well. She pins the press, she makes it look like she's going to go long, and makes sure that people are standing still. Then she transfers to Elena Tice to try and create space for her other centre back. Goes to the left hand side, that ball in. Looking for the short corner and they get it. I think in the end had to be given by the umpire on our side. The umpire in the D was unsighted by it, but good between the two umpires here to get that decision right and an opportunity for Ireland here. Really good communication and that's something you see the higher up you go, the better communication between the umpires and it's the first time really we've seen Ireland complain about anything so that would give you a clue that it had hit a foot very difficult to see looking into the sun and when there's that many players around so that is one of the reasons why we need we really need two referees in uh, in hockey again they've the options of McLaughlin and Upton at the top here go again towards Upton and this time round she does find the corner she threatened in the first quarter, but this time round, it's right in the corner. Nothing Kusharska could do in goal, and Ireland have that nice two-goal cushion to work with now. Obviously, something they've practiced a lot, that short corner. A little bit of a move to the left to create the angle. Gets the lift this time, though, to get it over the goalkeeper's foot, and Ireland have their second. Yeah, deserved second goal for... Ireland really getting into their work now. Naomi Carroll on the ball, drops it off again to Tarns, takes the shot, but it's a free out for a back stick. Just didn't quite get the angle right on that occasion. But good signs for Ireland. They're starting to link well, starting to create pockets of space. Yeah, Poland will be a little bit disappointed because they haven't played too badly in this second quarter. And you felt they were growing into the game slightly. Oh, and this is going to be a card here. It's not what they could have afforded. It's Amelia Catterla who's got herself a, a green card for a pretty cynical being within five yards and trying to disrupt that quick attack. And she'll have to serve two minutes on the sidelines. Well, they, they'd been warned already. The referee had already spoken to the Polish players about getting five, making a good effort to get five, so that she'd sent a warning shot. So 
Certainly has been some positives for this Polish side, though, even in the early stages, but they're protesting there that there may have been a, a foul committed. I'll be disappointed if this one was to go goal-bound. Carroll on the reverse, unable to get proper contact, and away for a long corner it goes. Paula Slavinska felt like there should have been a free for her. Hannah McLaughlin might think she should be getting that one. So it's getting a little bit more physical this match. <laughs> Katie Mullen looking to hit a bouncing ball on the reverse. Not too many more difficult things in hockey. No, probably not the percentage play. <coughs> it was a good lead to actually get the ball where she had. Though, and they're just beginning to expose perhaps maybe one or two cracks in the defence. It's a big crash ball from Poland and probably does a does a favour in terms of even just getting the ball down the other end of the pitch. But when you're implementing that now it's more so a half court press that you're just inviting pressure back onto you. Well they obviously feel like they've had too much space created by Ireland. And you could just hear the coach saying, move back. He wants them nice and tight. Make sure that Ireland can't make those leads back. And I suppose with the green card they had as well, who's now coming back onto the field, Catala. But they maybe just wanted to soak up that pressure when down to 10. Really good patience by Michelle Carey there. Good play from McLaughlin trying to drive through. I think they're going to get called back for one of the initial frees there. It is one of the features of this player to player press, though. If you can break through, it creates problems. Just beating one line makes big problems for the players behind you. Another crash ball. If McCauley had been able to take on that player, she had acres of space behind. You feel, given the amount of joy they've managed to get when they do drive down the line, that it's potentially more of an option than going for that crash ball, but they seem relatively insistent on it. Carey now, just a little bit of an infringement off the ball here. Carroll, Naomi Carroll, getting just a little telling off from the umpire. Well, just on that crash ball, I suppose, to make sure that the defenders stay line to goal, you have to sometimes go route one, change things up, vary it. Tice again, looking to find that angle. Just creating an overload down the left-hand side here, Ireland. They've gone to effectively two at the back. Michelle Carey by herself over on the right-hand side. She has plenty of space now. If she can go around the outside. Finds Purdue. Carey again. And wins a short corner. And Marlena Rebecca, who's the defender that's been penalised there, is not happy with this whatsoever. Is protesting to the umpire about what she could have done here. And... She may have some sort of case. Carey's just almost buffeted into her. Not really anywhere she could have gone. But it's another short corner for Ireland. Well, I suppose the ball was past her. She didn't win the ball, and Carey's entitled to run past her and, uh, and, uh, and retrieve the ball. So that's why the short corner is given. It's probably a little bit tight, but um, it didn't look good as well. Sometimes that comes into play. Hopton. Again at the top with Purdue this time. They go to Upton. Oh, and they're going to have to stop play here. I think this ball has just bounced up and hit Plasic in the face. Looks like she's okay, but certainly at the time can't be taking any too many precautions. Something you always say when you're coaching teams is first runner, you don't need a mask because... You're too close to the ball, but the angle that she created with her stick 
created the danger and that is why Ireland have another short corner. You might think it's a little bit unjust when you've just been hit in the face, but when it's your own stick that's created the danger, unfortunately you get the free called against you. There's been three drags from Roisin Upton, pretty much identical so far, and we might see a change up coming now. Yeah, well, they've changed spots there at the top. Upton to the second castle and Purdue to the first. Whether they'll still go to Upton, though. Potentially. They do. And it's a straight one. And there's an opportunity, perhaps, on a rebound here. It's an absolute melee in there. The ball breaks to Mullen, who has a snapshot and... It's going to be a long corner in the end. There must have been 10 or 12 players scrapping around for that ball within six yards, but they managed to... Well, I wouldn't say get rid of the danger. Yes, well, they might do now, Poland, because they've got themselves a free out and they've managed to weather a small storm. Yeah, it was a good change up there from Upton. Just slid it to the left for Michelle Carey to deflect on the reverse. Probably a little bit too close to the goalkeeper, though, to lift it over her. That press from Ireland has gotten more and more aggressive as this game has gone on. And just putting pressure on Poland again. Tatterchuk, though, more than able to use good skill to get herself out of a bit of a bind. Got a little clever reverse ball down the line. Poland for the first time in a few minutes just getting a little bit of time on the ball. They'll find Tatterchuk here. They'll look to take it on. And that is a short corner. Just sloppy defending from Roisin Upton there. Feet got stuck and she reached out to try and win the ball because she knew she couldn't recover. It was given as a short corner because a clear opportunity to shoot on goal. I have to correct myself. I said that it was Michelle Carey who was going for the reverse deflection earlier. It's her twin sister, Neve. I think we'll let you away with that one. Well, they used to have very different hair. Neve used to have the straight hair, Michelle had the curly hair, and now they've gone, they've both gone with the curly hair. So uh, as a twin myself, I feel like I should really <laughs> get these things right. So apologies, Una, I'm sure you're watching somewhere. Kendall go to the two at the top. It's pretty wayward and just straight to the hey! stopper as a result. A bit of a melee again, and this time scrapped away. Calls from the Polish bench below us. I think they wanted a, another short corner there for McFerrin. Somewhat being in over the top of that ball. I'm not sure they had really much to complain about. With the pull out not going right. It's always the way you get one chance and uh, the injection doesn't go right. But good high pressure being applied by Poland now. Just the 10 seconds left, though, in this second quarter, as you can see on the scoreboard here in the ground. So the Hooter is going to sound, and there it goes. And we're at half time, and a good second quarter for Ireland. They've managed to find two goals in there one for Deirdre Duke, and one for Roisin Upton from one of the short corners. And it'll be probably a much happier team talk after half time than it was after the first quarter. Absolutely. Deirdre Duke's goal was a classical type of goal that you get when the defending team are so tight in defence because she just had to get one step ahead of the ball to send it in. And then Roshi Nupton, well, she missed out the first time. She wasn't going to miss out the second. She's pinpoint perfect. Yeah, very strong start from Ireland at the halfway stage. They are 2 0 up. Duke and Upton with those two goals. And I suppose from a Polish perspective here, Isabel, how do they try to get themselves back into this game? They're starting to look a little bit tired. That's what happens when you're defending most of the time. So it's really difficult then when you're going forward. 
because you start making mistakes going forward as soon as you you managed to win the ball on defence, it's crash balls and things like that. So it's difficult to see them coming back, but uh, they'll regroup and come up with some new tactics, no doubt. What's well, the scene at the halfway stage? Ireland 2, Poland 0 in game two here of the Euro Hockey Championship qualifiers of 2022 here in the National Sports Campus in Abbottstown in Dublin. Halftime break will take around five or six minutes and we'll join you back then for what should be a very good second half.
Welcome back to Abbottstown here for the second half of this game in the Euro Hockey Championship Qualifiers of 2022. Ireland starting off their qualifying campaign here and they're 2-0 up at half time against Poland. Myself, Andrew Blair White and Isabel Joyce will be bringing you through the second half and a pretty good first half from Ireland. Yeah, really good energy, good patience shown after the first few minutes. I think as well, we're starting to see Poland look a little bit tired. Ireland just looking like they're getting into the tournament and um, plenty of pace on offer as well. Could see plenty more goals, hopefully, for the Irish fans in the second half. Sun just starting to think about going away, so Ireland will have the best of the conditions. Poland spent the whole first half looking straight into the sun. Just waiting to get the all clear to start off this second half. Ireland now going to be playing from left to right, as you see on your screens. Not quite sure what the delay is for, but everyone seems ready to go. And they've now gotten the all clear. Immediately the music came on. And Carol gets herself on the ball and immediately recycles out to McLaughlin. And Ireland will be looking to try and build something. Already you can see Roisin Upton playing a little bit more advanced this time around than she was in the first half, where she sat with Tice and the two of them played a lot between each other. Really poor pass, and Naomi Carroll gets an opportunity with Deirdre Duke, just plays it off. Sends her wide of the circle. Really good goalkeeping. Hawkshaw now into Katie Mullen. Gets the shot away, but that was a much better chance than they probably took there. Ireland, Naomi Carroll, I think, could have done better to hold on to the ball a little bit longer, draw the defender, give Deirdre Duke a better angle to attack the goal. Upton finds Tice. He's got a chance to find a ball in the D there. And Duke tried her best to control it on the slide, but was unable to quite bring it in. Good positive start from Ireland, though, in this second half. Again, pressing aggressively and causing issues to this Polish defence who do nicely to spread that ball round. Really well controlled. Considering the angle of that ball, very high for Sashinska. Would have been another really good opportunity for Ireland. Lots of space to attack into. So they want to win the ball about there, about halfway line. Send a forward high. Coley just gets turned, but does well to recover. Really good work from her. A little bit of sloppy play between the two teams now as we start the second half. Yeah, both sides just losing that ball a little bit too much for their liking. Sushinska trying to build something on the right hand side, but just that cutting edge. Not quite there for Poland at the moment. Sandra Tatarchuk, who was really one of the leading lights in that first half, took the game to Ireland. Purdue just a little too strong in the in the foul, or in the tackle creates a foul. there for Poland to try and break down the Irish defence but they do nicely there Tatterchuk out to the right hand side it's always dangerous when you're coming in from the end line there but Hannah McLaughlin initially did very well 
Roisin Upton looking to win a foul, unable to do so. And Poland have managed to win themselves a short corner, courtesy of some good work from Bianca Strub. They've got a chance to potentially work an opening and get themselves on the score sheet. A dangerous ball to try and work the ball out of the baseline. And we've got McLaughlin called for stick shielding there. So Poland not able to get access to the ball, given a short corner. They've been disappointed with their last short corner. The injection went to the wrong place. They practice these so often. Well, they've yet to go to Rebecca at the top. And they don't again. A little change up and it was a very good opportunity that actually. It was Polovchak changing that one up to find Tatterchuk, who was trying to go for the first time finish and just missed it really and it ended up hitting into her foot. Absolutely. I think Roshi Upton spotted some players on the sideline. She thought they were one of her, the players on the pitch, so tried to find them with the, with the quick ball out of the circle. McCauley just looking to go on to her reverse too quickly for me. He's on left back, trying to take the ball in her reverse and not strong enough, good receive, or good run from Hawkshaw, not as good a receive as she would have hoped for. Wins it back though, and then gives it away immediately. Tatterchuk doing the work. Not quite happening for Poland there, and Tatterchuk gives the foul away. Upton finds Curran with a bit of space to run into, plays that ball down the line towards Torrens. Again, just a bit of a mistrap. Katie McKee into the game as well up front. Pressure in the corner. Ireland showing good patience to try and win it, but it's out to Tatterchuk and then Ellen Curran just hits the back of her stick to give away an easy free. I need to try and sort that out, Ireland, because the number of times that Poland have been stuck up in that corner and have got out. Once again, Poland just looking to win the ball in an aerial. You're not allowed to be under the ball when it's thrown up by your own player. To be give the opposition player five yards if they are underneath it. So Upton settled underneath that ball. Poland applying lots of pressure to Lena Tice here. Does well. Yeah, they're, try they're trying to do something a little bit different to what they did in the first half, just cause a little bit more pressure on the ball and causing Ireland a, a little bit more anxiety as a result. Roisin Upton's brilliant in those situations. She always manages to just find the angle to run out of defence. Good change of pace. Just shows that you don't need searing pace. You just need to be able to go slow then fast to beat players. Carey again looking to win the ball in the corner. Yeah, not the first time we've seen that transpire, and also not for the first time have we seen Ireland give away a, a sloppy enough foul in that area. A little bit of firmness in the whistle blowing from the umpire on that occasion, indicating they mightn't be far away from maybe a green card offence if they go again. Really well won by Tyrons and then Neve Carey. A bit of a stick foul follows that up. Referee blew it back. Ireland just calming things down now after a bit of a few frenetic minutes. Bit of time on the ball. That ball is sent forward towards McKee. Good control. Try 
Tries to work an angle for the reverse in, and it was a very good one and a chance for Mullen. That's a good save. A really good save they by Krusharska in the Polish net. The ball broke forward after a really good piece of work from McKee on the left-hand side. Broke to Mullen, but unable to convert. Tatterchuk yet again in one of these marauding runs. Really a free for nothing there. Ill discipline. Purdue now on the right finds Carey, who lifts it up into herself. Yeah, really good cross from McKee and brilliant goalkeeping there from Kucharska. Finding Rebecca, trying to go down this left-hand flank now. Torrens over quickly, if anything, a little bit overly so. And really high in the press now. You can see them trying to win the ball immediately off the Polish players. McKee just not looking at the referee there. There's probably just been a little bit of sloppiness from both sides, really, in this third quarter. It's been relatively fragmented. Quite a lot of times the play has just broken down on occasion. And there's another situation there, Upton trying to play that ball up towards Naomi Carroll, and it's just not quite working. Yeah, good pressure being applied by Poland there, being a lot. A lot more attacking in terms of their defence in this quarter than we've seen in the previous two. Making Ireland do their skills, make their passes under a bit more pressure. Lovely skill from Christina Hamill. The referee doesn't see the foot in the circle though. Ireland players had stopped. It was a pretty clear foul. Hamill again does well. Gets the ball out from the right hand side. Now space on the left. Begs. McKee okay. trying to drive through there. McCauley takes over. And all are judged to be fine there. Great work from Beggs trying to drive into the D. Again, good last ditch defending from Poland. Really good defence from McKee. Finds the foot just outside the circle of Rebecca. Carey now again. Purdue just doesn't manage to stop the onslaught and uh, in her attempt at stopping the Polish players from running forward when there was not much back for Ireland, she gets a green card. Yeah, green card for Purdue. Judged to be a relatively cynical foul there. Perhaps a, a hint harsh given there was plenty of other defenders around, but... Okay, McKee, you're the striker. We've got two strikers. Doesn't even flinch, <laughs> McKee. Well, I think it was a good decision from the umpire myself. She's failed a lot in that manner. Has Quiva Perdue. She's the, the most defensive of the midfielders, but Ireland's still looking to go forward despite the fact that they're down to 10. I might see them just drop out a little bit now as they try and wind down the clock for that two minute sim bin. Yeah, you can sense even at this stage, the toll it's taking on this Polish team. Some tired bodies out there. They're defending with great dignity at the moment. Trying to stay in this game obviously at 2-0 the game is still alive Tatterchuk back on the ball back trying to make ground for a side a good ball down the line there from Caterla just intercepted but 
She has the line ball and she goes and driving again. Gets a long corner this time for her troubles. This is good hockey from good Poland, patience. Ireland, down to 10. So they transfer across. Difficult as the defensive Holland, team when you're down a player good, when the lines are changed good, like that. Christina Hamill good, just looking to win the free coming out at right back. Good tight control. Lena Tice will take as long as she can out of this ball. And throws the aerial. Turn, turn, turn. Purdue back on the pitch. So Ireland back to 11. Trying to find a, an entry into the circle there down that left hand side. Our Poland. Good, Ball good, back with pull off track. Good, Sarah. Now again they go down the line. Well Just done. a bit of a sloppy piece of control from Balser Jack and Ireland able to win the free and try and just take the wind out of the sails here. Of the Polish side that attacked there with a bit of venom for a few minutes. Good overlapping run by Dukin. Up high, trying to create space up top. Pull the Polish defenders away. Make some space in midfield. And Sarah McCauley now overlapping on the left. She goes on to her preferred reverse for a cracking cross, but I think it was... A hopeful one rather than a directed one. No one really up there that she was trying to find. Yeah, I was asking a lot of Deirdre Duke who was making that diagonal lead. Coming right towards the conclusion of this third quarter. Just five or six seconds remaining on the clock. And the hooter does go there for the end of the third quarter. Ireland still in relative command here. 2-0 up at the end of three quarters. And in truth, not an interval that provided too many clear-cut chances, is it? No, well, you asked at halftime what would Poland do to try and counteract Ireland's dominance in the second quarter. And I think the way that they changed up their press was a, a good option. They, You could see they all went at the same time, put pressure on the centre-backs, on, on the wing-backs and uh, they got some joy out of it and there were a few occasions where they looked like they might get through but um, Ireland doing really well in defence has kept them out so far. Yeah, Ireland in relative safe keeping in this game you'd think but the only problem at 2-0 is you do let a goal in and, and suddenly you get a, a nasty little 10 minutes at the end of a game that really the overall way the game has gone doesn't deserve. Yeah, the third goal is a really important one. If Poland get one back, make it 2-1, it makes it very nervy for Ireland. It's amazing when you're the underdogs and you're one goal down, you're a very dangerous animal. Whereas if Ireland get the third goal, it's really a difficult one for Poland. You're very much out of sight. And, uh, I think both teams will be looking to push in the first five minutes here to see can they get the ascendancy in this game. Certainly plenty of Vim and Vigor still in the team talk of the Polish bench in the dugout just below us here on the commentary gantry. We're going to see a more notable change than the usual rolling on and off that we're used to. Anna Gabara is in Nets for Poland for this final quarter, certainly the start off this final quarter. Instead of Marta Kucharska has come up with some pretty key saves, but obviously trying to give both keepers a chance. Absolutely, it's a, su a surprising one for me. I know she's let in two goals, but she has been really impressive, Kucharska. 
good intercept from Hawkshaw. And Ireland win the ball back. Poland much higher in attack now. We're going to see them looking to get higher up the pitch and uh, Sarah McCauley just not able to control that one. The sun's gone in and with it's gone the heat. You can see everyone in the background there, all the supporters starting to get the coats on. Good contest there between the two and foul goes the way of the Polish and that crash ball in and Hannah McLaughlin isn't penalised for a short corner there. I'd say her heart was in her mouth just for a small instance. It was a big shout of hey and I think it was from Norbert Nederloff, head coach of Poland, saying that should be a short corner. It was directed out definitely but she managed to make it a little bit of a question for the umpire. They don't want to give those short corners and so she didn't. She wouldn't want to do it again though, Hannah McLaughlin. No, certainly not. Lenient call on this occasion from the umpire on the far side of the pitch from where we're seeing. Rebecca, they're going for a ambitious overhead given the amount of space they had, but Get the long corner and try to work it out through the left hand side. Hearing again the Polish coach underneath us shouting patience. And in the end, Rebecca found herself in a position where she could get that ball in, but wasn't unfortunately trapped properly, and that opportunity goes away. That ball was not meant for Balser Jacques, I'm almost certain of that. I suppose to get through further for a touch probably by one of the higher players. Fortuitous for Ireland that Balser Jacques got that touch on the ball. Did their defending for them and really good running there from Blaschik. Put pressure on Lena Tys, forced the error. And Poland looked like they're up for this match. Yeah, it certainly looks like they're going to try and give it a rattle here in this final quarter. And maybe put a bit of pressure on Ireland. You would there in the quarterly break that at any stage for Poland here even if it was with three four minutes to go just cause a little bit of a nervy finish that Ireland will certainly not want they'll want to finish this game off make sure those three points are in the bag again McCauley going for that long ball down the line just missing the, the lead of Kerry Probably could have, could have done with a more weighted pass there from McCauley. There's plenty of space for Michelle Carey to run out onto that one, but just too fast. Off the stick of Hawkshaw there. And it's gone through everyone. <laughs> Missed trap from two or three of them. Alan Curran ends up sweeping it up. I want the experience that Ireland has. They have some players with huge numbers of caps to their names. There's one of them, Katie Mullen. They want her on the ball, Roisin Upton. And that should be a short corner it is. Really dangerous play from Poland there, putting herself in the danger area. There's Amelia Katerla. And you cannot run behind a swinging stick like that when there's a shot because she's put herself in the danger. Now, she didn't uh, really get hit, but it caught the stick of Katie Mullen and uh, really could be a card. Uh, they're lucky Poland to be still at 11 players. Yeah, well, the short corner is the, the verdict in the end. I saw some of the Irish players looking for a card, one or two of them looking for a stroke. I would have thought that was a little bit ambitious. No, well, I think you, you, if, you, if you referred it, it would be given as a stroke because it's such a cynical foul that there are a number of fouls, but the one where the player's coming in behind and then interferes with the stick is a complete no-no. We're going to get a proper injection now from Sarah Torrens. Tice and Upton over the ball. It's going to be Tice sweeps it, finds the foot of Tatterchek. <laughs> she doesn't really hide it very well, does she? Limping back to the goal. Yeah, certainly. Again, very good communication on show from the two umpires this evening. That 
Short corner given by the umpire near off the halfway line. Unsighted. Twice again, Katie Mullen will get a snapshot away. I think she feels she deserves a short corner. It ended up making its way across goal there. And it's a very, very good save by the new keeper on the pitch for Poland, Anna Gabara. That's a superb save. It looked like it was only a formality of going in the goal and she's managed to keep it out and keep Poland in this tie. Curran couldn't quite get the pace on it. Taran's now in the circle around the outside. And they're lining up on the penalty spot, but desperate defending here from Poland. Yeah, well they're certainly giving it their all, Poland here. No stone being left unturned from a defensive standpoint, but you feel Ireland are very close to breaking through yet again. Time being stopped here. Maybe a little bit too exuberant in the circle from both attackers and defenders are being told to just calm it down a little bit. Deirdre Duke seems to be finding the funny side of it. I don't think she was overly perturbed. Having a good giggle with our defender, Polish defender. Good tight defending from Poland. Pr pressure has been so huge on the forwards when they're receiving the ball in this game. It's forced a lot of errors in the front line. Trying to find a way through there, Caterla. Just a missed trap. Meaning that she stays on the ball. Tries to some skill to get inside wins another free just advancing that ball up Poland feel need to be trying to score in the next couple of minutes if they're to have any chance in this game of retrieving a draw good shift being put in by Ireland and she's been key in there Sarah Hawkshaw really good intercepts but that's fell from Roisin Upton allowed to play on and I think that the umpire probably called that one a little bit too soon. Well, not for the first time, it's Sandra Tatterchuk causing a lot of problems for Poland. She's been really lively in there in that kind of attacking midfield role. She's got an incredible turn of pace. You can see her when she's on the ball and the Irish defenders are trying to keep up with her. She's still managing to win, it, win the race. Unusual. They go crash ball and they win themselves a short corner there. They found a foot. It was a good crash ball by Polovchak. And it was Blasic in there who was looking to get that snapshot away. Into the foot it went. And they're not going to get many better opportunities there. Be, they'll be disappointed with their short corner routine so far today. Though they haven't really troubled... Aisha McFerrin in the Irish goal. Yeah, it's always disappointing if the short corners don't come off. Struba to inject. They go this time to Rebecca for the first time today. Trying to get it in on the reverse there and unable to do so. And they were perhaps a little bit hard done by that. The umpire called that one back as Katie McKee looked to be getting through. She hasn't been on the pitch that much, Katie McKee, but she's been very impressive when she has been. Seems to have great confidence on the ball. Bit of a disappointing finish to that short corner. Opted to go on the reverse one, probably wasn't required, and that's a great intercept 
Poland now on the attack. That's Carterla again. A good returning tackle from Beggs. Bit of desperation in that back tackle there from Caterla. Uh, just might see things getting a little bit ragged in these last six minutes as Poland in particular tire. Yeah, but they've put up a very good fist of things, really. And especially in this fourth quarter, they have given it a, a good rattle. As Ireland will get the free from that reverse. Roisin Upton will step up onto it. The worry for Poland is this is game one. And they come thick and fast. Plenty more matches for them to play and Probably this isn't the one that they would have been targeting. And really good intercept by Chojevic. Upton looking to win the ball back. And that is given as a short corner. I think that's actually harsh. Roisin Upton showing that Chojevic was hiding the ball really behind her. It's obstruction when you hold the ball and the defender can't reach it, but it's a short corner anyway. And a chance for us to see, are we going to see the drag from, from Rebecca? Well, you feel they have to try something a little bit different to what we've seen so far. It's been a real lack of invention and a lack of scoring opportunity really from Poland, haven't truly tested the Irish goal. Doesn't look like she's going on the drag again. Here, interesting to see, they go to the second castle, the drag comes from Polovchak, and the reverse there was missed, and they will now call that free away, and... Not a lot of power in this drag flick, and saved with a bit of disdain by McFerrin. The difficulty for Ireland was clearing the ball with those masks on. It can sometimes be difficult to see very well when you have them on, so a little bit untidy. Are you surprised we haven't seen Rebecca more involved in the in the short corner routines for Poland? Absolutely. She was carded as being their main attack, but Neve Carey almost finds Naomi Carroll running in on the far post. It was a really good, quick cross from her. Good, quick thinking. That is her strength. Great takedown from Katie Mullen. And a shot comes away. Good save. End to end stuff. Yeah, it's been a fast paced final quarter. Not dissimilar to the game earlier on today where. When both sides tire that little bit, it just becomes more and more open. Hannah Gabara has come into the game here in the fourth quarter in goal for Poland and has made a few very nice saves. So they'll be pleased by that. Both keepers, both Kusharska and Gabara, both showing themselves off to be more than capable for the job at hand. As we head into the last three and a half minutes there, I think the game's in pretty safe keeping at this stage for Ireland. Good change here. Upton pushing up a line. Adding a little bit more control to the ball going forward. Playing in more of a diamond shape here now, Ireland. Upton playing very much in front of the back three. And they had been opting to go with the wing backs up the line, but uh, looking now to have the more attacking option be up to in the centre. That should be a free, really, for Macaulay. Poland not five yards at any point there. It's a good ball from Curran. Finds Torrens. Then this right-hand side. Can Ireland find one last goal? Mullen... Oh, um, just didn't quite get the contact she'd have desired. It was a very good opportunity, given the position she got herself into, but it's a bit of a limp shot in the end. She's been very incisive today, Mullen. A live wire, really leading from the front.
Cock continuing to dwindle down for Ireland here inside the final two. As they search for what would just be a lovely way to top off a good start to their qualification campaign. A little foot there for Macaulay. She's been uncharacteristically sloppy today, Macaulay. I think she'll be a little bit disappointed by a few missed traps today, normally so tidy. Plenty of time to correct things though, and Katie Mullen wins back again. And looks to go herself. Dear to Duke looking to get ahead. And Katie Mullen just looking to run out of steam. She got away with one there. It hit the foot, but very difficult to see. Go quick free. It was a good, ch good chance and the Polish defenders are absolutely apoplectic here because within the last 30, 35 seconds, there's arguably four calls that have gone against them from Tatterchuk getting fouled on the halfway line, not given. Then Mullen's foot, then Mullen went into the D after around two yards. And then the short corner's been given for seemingly not much. Well, I'm pretty sure there was a foot, a Polish foot on the far side that wasn't spotted by the umpire in the circle. She used her partner who was, had a clear sight. She obviously saw something, but there were a couple of frees missed. As we head into the last 30 seconds, can Ireland score a third? It's Upton, slides it in and in it goes. Third goal for Ireland. And I think that's all through the work of their captain, Katie Mullen. She won the corner and uh, Upton got another chance. I think it was for a deflection, but she didn't need any deflectors. She found the corner and netted home again. Yeah, the perfect way for Ireland to finish off this first game. I said there in the last couple of minutes that they'd have been looking for maybe the icing on the cake there right at the end. Poland now just desperately looking for some type of consolation. They've performed with pretty good credit today, but unfortunately haven't had that cutting edge in the final third to really challenge Ireland's defence enough. And then... Two well worked short corner goals from Roisin Upton alongside a deflected goal from Deirdre Duke being enough for Ireland to take three points from this first game. It's been the difference, hasn't it? The cutting edge in the circle. Ireland have had it. Poland haven't They've had plenty of short corners. Just haven't been able to make them count. Something they'll look back on and root as Katie Mullen winds down the And a fist goes in the air. Ireland have their first win on the scoreboard. After the draw earlier, they take the lead in this Euro Hockey Championship qualifier. Yeah, very good performance from Ireland, winning 3-0. Potentially in the first game of these sort of qualifications, you can sometimes have a slippery fixture, a, a fixture that you could drop points and, and potentially make it wide open. Instead, it's been a bit of a statement victory. Two goals for Roisin Upton, one for Deirdre Duke. And you'd have to think Sean Dancer would be pretty happy with his team there. Absolutely. As you say, it's when you get the team going in, expected to win. But Deirdre Duke, Roisin Upton, Katie Mullen have really led from the front there. The most cap players really in the team. Also, Elena Tice showing her class. So no surprise to see them on the scoreboard. No surprise to see those experienced players leading the way, but really exciting performances from some of the younger Irish players as well. Great to see them on home soil in front of a home crowd and getting a win and uh, starting off on the road to the Euros. And from Poland's perspective, looking ahead, they've got the Czech Republic and Turkey still to come. There was plenty of promise in that performance, but... They'll need a little bit more cutting edge going forward and you just wonder how much that game's taken out of them. Well, that's the worry. How much energy do they have now for the next two matches? As I said, this wouldn't have been the game they would target. You would imagine they'd be targeting the games against Turkey and the Czech Republic.
but that would have taken a huge amount out of them. They can be proud of the performance. There wasn't a huge amount between the two teams. It was that cutting edge, but uh, Ireland is showing their their class and their higher ranking by being able to finish those chances. And you can see very happy faces in that Irish camp and a happy crowd going home here from the National Sports Campus here in Abbottstown. We really hope you've enjoyed the coverage both on the Hockey Ireland YouTube channel and the Euro Hockey website brought to you by HPV Studios in partnership with Hockey Ireland. It's been an absolute pleasure, Isabel, and hopefully see you back here on Saturday where the games will continue. Ireland playing the Czech Republic and Poland playing Turkey in the second round of games before we go again on Sunday to conclude this qualification tournament. But for myself and Isabel, it's goodbye for now.